All right, question five says, a polling agency showed the following two statements to a random sample of 1,048 adults in the U.S. There's an environmental statement. It says protection of the environment should be given priority over economic growth and an economy statement. Economic growth should be given priority over protection in the environment. The order in which the statements were shown was randomly selected for each person in the sample. After reading the statements, each person was asked to choose the statement that was most consistent with his or her opinion. The results are shown in the table. So, looks like this adds up to 100% representing the entire sample. Assume the conditions for inference have been met. Construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all adults in the U.S. who would have chosen the economy statement. So this is nice. Conditions have been met. So let's jump right into this. Uh, I'm still going to do it as a state plan do conclude. So state, um, we wish to construct a 95% confidence interval for the true proportion of U.S. adults who would choose the economy statement. All right, um, we've got our confidence level, the parameter we're trying to estimate. So for our plan step, conditions have been met. Um, so we will use a one proportion Z interval. All right, so there's our inference procedure and it was stated that conditions have been met. So we can jump to our do step. Every confidence interval is a point estimate plus or minus some margin of error. And the margin of error you can break up into a, in this case, a Z star, which is our critical value, times the um, standard deviation of the P hats. So this will be P hat plus or minus the standard deviation from the sampling distribution. So uh, let's fill out the values we have. The economy statement was 0.37 plus or minus. Now we want to do a 95% confidence interval. So to figure out what our Z star is, let's, let's use a, a table here because I actually forgot my calculator. In a 95% confidence interval, the middle 95% of the normal curve needs to be cut off. If that's the case, then the area here in this tail would be 0 0.025, and the area in this tail would be 0 0.025. So that all together it adds to 100%. So since this table tells us the cumulative area from left to right, um, if we just find what Z star cuts off, and that, that matches this diagram here, what Z star cuts off the lower 2.5% of the area? So we find that right here at uh, 1.96. So 1.96 is going to be our Z star. Um, if you're doing this on a TI calculator, you could do it either using inverse norm of 0 0.025 or inverse norm of 0.975, which would read all the way up to here. All right, so we've got our, our 1.96, that's Z star right here. And the standard deviation of our sampling distribution is the square root of P hat times Q hat all divided by n, and looks like our sample size was 1048. All right, so let's use the calculator to figure out what the margin of error is here. All 
all right, um, divided by 1048, our n, and then we need the square root of that, so square root. I think that's our margin of error right there. So 0.37 plus or minus um, 0 0.0149. One four. That's probably enough digits. Um, and since now we're rounding, I'm going to put approximately. Um, so let's see what sort of interval that gives us. Maybe I can save this as the memory. Okay, let's see. 0.37 plus the memory value is 0.38. Four nine and 0.37 minus the memory value is 0.3551. All right, I believe that is our our confidence interval. Right in the middle is the 0.37. So um, the last thing we need to do is conclude, and in the conclusion step, we should interpret our confidence interval. We are 95% confident that the true proportion of adults in the U.S. that would answer, uh, that would, yeah, that would choose the economy statement is contained in the interval 0.3551 and 0.3849. All right, we've interpreted the confidence interval. Uh, important that our interpretation is referring to the parameter, which is the true proportion of adults, not the sample, which is the sample proportion. And it's in context. So I, I think we've, uh, we've satisfied A there. All right, part B. One of the conditions for inference uh, that was met is that the number who chose the economy statement and the number who did not choose the economy statement are both greater than 10. Um, explain why it's necessary to satisfy this condition. All right. Um, well, when constructing our confidence interval, we used Z star which is no, a normal calculation, uh, which is a value based on, based on the sampling distribution of p hat being approximately normal. Without the Without the number who chose the economy statement and those who didn't, each being at least 10, our sampling distribution is not normal enough. Well, we'll put our sampling distribution cannot be assumed to be approximately normal. All right. Um, part C. Well, let me read this again. One of the conditions, all right, explain why it's necessary to satisfy this condition. All right, I, I think we got it. We squeezed a little bit of context in there by talking about the number who would choose the economy statement versus those that wouldn't. So I think we're okay. Part C. A suggestion was made to use a two-sample Z interval. Huh. Um, for the difference between proportions to investigate whether the difference in proportions between adults in the U.S. who would have chosen the environment statement and adults in the United States who would have chosen the economy statement is statistically significant. Is this two-sample Z interval for a difference between proportions an appropriate procedure? Justify your answer. Um, this one I'm, a, I'm not 100% on, but since this is a two-sample procedure, and in the problem we took a random sample, I don't know how you could use 
this one random sample to represent two samples. In fact, one of the conditions for two sample inference is that the two samples are independent of each other. In this case, there's not independence between the people who chose environmental statement and economy statement. Um, in fact, there's, there's some dependence there because, I mean, excluding the no preference, they're, they're practically complements of each other. So let's see. It's a two sample uh, interval for a difference between proportions and appropriate measure. So they asked an is question, so let's start off with no. We've answered the is question. No, um, first, there was only, actually this might be my only point, <laughs> so maybe I won't start with first. No, there was only one sample taken, there was only one sample taken, comma, not two independent samples, not two independent samples that would justify to sample inference. The response is in the, the responses um, of those who chose environment and those who chose economy are not independent. All right, 